Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 52 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about response.redirect technique in ASP.NET. In part 51 of this video series, we've discussed about different page navigation techniques. Specifically, we discussed about hyperlink control. In this session, we'll discuss about response.redirect method. The rest of the page navigation techniques will be discussed in the subsequent video sessions. Response.redirect is very similar to clicking on a hyperlink control. The hyperlink control does not expose any server-side events. So when the user clicks on a hyperlink, there is no server-side event to intercept the click. So if you want to intercept the click event in code, and if you want to do some processing before you actually redirect the user to a new page, then we can make use of response.redirect method. This response.redirect method can be invoked in the click of a button. And that button could be a push button, link button, or an image button. Let's actually look at that in action. So here I have a simple ASP.NET web application project with one web form. Let me go ahead and add another web form to this project. So we have two web forms now. On web form 1.aspx, let's drag and drop a button control. And on the click of this button control, I want to redirect the user to web form 2.aspx. So response object has got the redirect method. And this redirect method expects a string parameter, which is nothing but the URL of the page that we want to redirect the user to. In this case, I want to redirect the user to the uh, web form 2.aspx. So let me use the tilde symbol, which indicates the root directory of the web application. So in the root directory, I want to go to web form 2.aspx. OK, so let's run this page now. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is that when we use response.redirect, there are two request response cycles going on. So currently, we are on web form 1.aspx page. So when I click this button, the web, I mean, a post back request for web form 1.aspx will be sent to the web server. And on the web server, what are we doing? We are having this code, response.redirect. So as soon as the web server encounters this response.redirect, what's going to happen? It's going to send a response header back to the client. And then the client will then initiate a GET request for the new page automatically. And then the web server will receive that request. It's going to process the GET request for the new page and then send the HTML response back for that, back to the client. So obviously, there are two you know, request response cycles. OK, so obviously now, if I click this button, look at that. I am on web form 1.aspx. As soon as I click this button, it changes to web form 2.aspx. So a post back to web form 1, that's one request, and a get request to web form 2, that's another request. Obviously, two request response cycles. And this is very important to keep in mind, because when we compare response.redirect with other page navigation techniques like server.transfer. You know, server.transfer doesn't involve two, two request response cycles. So that's one of the important differences between response.redirect and server.transfer. Depending on the requirements of our application, we'll be able to pick and choose the right technique if we understand all these differences properly. Not only that, this will also help us clear the interview. OK, so that's one point to keep in mind. And another thing, this response.redirect method can be used to navigate to, an, to a page or a website on the same web server or on a different web server, just like the hyperlink control. Because, you know, for example, if you take server.transfer, using server.transfer and server.execute, you can only transfer to pages or websites on the same web server. If they are hosted on a different web server, we cannot use those techniques. But with hyperlink control and response.redirect, we can navigate to any site or any page, whether they are present on the same web server or on a different web server. And another point to keep in mind is that uh, when we use response.redirect, the history is maintained. So I am on Web Form 2, but I click on the back button in the browser, I am able to go to the Web Form 1. So the URL changes, the browser maintains the history of the pages visited. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.